Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live and that was the wrong video intro. We're not animating verbs, we're doing kinetic typography today. <laughs> one job, Tina. That's my one job. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tina, for joining us again. Tina, Victoria, Afshar, everybody. Um, lovely to see you again. Um, Hello, and Flynn Tracy. <laughs> we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today and also pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, what up, chat? Uh, the chat we're using today, as always, for Adobe Live is um, at be.net slash live. Um, see some lovely folks in here. Got Johanna looking after us today. Gareth is here. Hi, Gareth. Uh, Tanya is here. What's up? Steve Fester Kosselboom. Great to see you, my friend. I uh, hope everyone is doing really well today. It's Thursday here in Australia and Melbourne, and uh, that's a different country. Um, but what up? <laughs> <laughs> um, You're doing I've, so well. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the camera off. Um, but yeah, we were we were chatting about kinetic typography. Um, and so we have like a, a really interesting session. Um, hopefully you join us for the Tuesday session where we did animating verbs, um, mm. which was lots of fun. Um, and it was good fun. Of, yeah, this was this was like Tina's thing. So I was like, let's just do animating verbs for two sessions. And Tina's like, let's do kinetic typography for the second one. <laughs> and I was like, that's ambitious. That's really cool. Um, yeah. But what you have prepared is super, super cool. Um but yeah, had you done any type, any like kinetic typography before or have you figured it out? Because I love this. I hadn't done any before. I had to figure this one out. And obviously YouTube was a big, big help. Um, there are some plugins, like there's a plugin called Trap Code, which is very expensive and very, you know, un, you know what's the word? Not accessible, right. but um, very cool. And all you have to do is just press a couple of buttons and it makes kinetic typography for you. Um, but with your challenge, Flynn, I thought, let me see what I can do for us. So well, I hope this, it'll be good. Yeah, this sort of stuff is really good to, like, even if you do end up using a plugin to kind of shortcut things, it's always great to mm. understand things like like mm. how it's working anyway, because if I always find that, like, because I've downloaded free resources and paid for resources to kind of do things, and I kind of get in there and, I, and it, it will work most of the time. But the second something breaks, I don't know how it was built in the first exactly. place. Um, yes, yeah, so you're at the mercy of the plugin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, that's that's not being ambitious enough. No, it's not. It's no. Not. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm excited. I hope this will be fun to come along with. We're going to actually be writing our own expression because on Tuesdays, I copied and pasted an expression, which is like a bit of code to make things bounce and move around and be fun. But we're making some expressions together from scratch. Okay. So it's going to... Feel a bit like, you know, when you tell your parents, I'm in, I don't know, I work in design or I work in animation and they just assume one thing about your job and they just assume like a whole bunch of code on your screen and you're just like tapping like away. Matrix, and, matrix yeah, like the matrix. Yeah. This is the closest we're going to get to that. <laughs> All but, right. <laughs> I like it. I always loved like, the, you know, like the nineties movies, like or early two thousands movies where they're just smashing the keyboard and they always go, I'm in. <laughs> yes! Oh my god! No, the best part, the best part, is when they're like, "Can you make it high res?" And all he does is just presses like the space bar, and all, all of a right. sudden it's enhance. like, yeah, enhance, and it's like crystal clear, and they can see the culprit's face. I'm like, that's not how it works, baby. Yeah. Um, I love those. That's what my mom thinks that I do. Yeah, enhance. Oh, bless us all. <laughs> just press the space bar. Nice oh, one. Gosh. All right. Can I watch this? Should we jump? Yeah, let's let's watch it. Zip. Okay, we're over Zip. at your um, your desktop now, looking at this magnetic oh. kinetic. I'll start know. it again. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. Zoom. Oh, our cameras are and out of sync. <laughs> you go Cute. left and I go right, but yeah, oh. this is mirroring. <laughs> Usually we're so in sync. I know. Um, well, this little bad boy is the layers uh, panel that we're going to be working with is a bit hectic, but it's okay. I'll try and make sense of it as we go along. Um, it's not going to be as complicated as we think. So hopefully we can all do this together. Uh, but shall I start, Flynn? Yep, let's do it. Um, just got to do a quick shout out to our mutual good friend, Ian Haig, in the chat. Hello, Ian. Oh, Ian! <laughs> the funniest man in Australia is I Ian know. Haig. 
I, I'm actually, before we get started, I'm going to do a quick little promo uh, for Adobe Max. Oh, yes. Um, Ian Haig has, um, is doing a talk at Adobe Max, um, which is happening in October. So you can jump over there and register. Um, Johanna will share a link in there. I've seen it and it is hilarious because Ian is, oh my God. as <laughs> Tina said, the funniest human on the planet. Um, it's lots of fun. He did a great job. Um, and I think everybody here will enjoy watching that. So jump, make sure you jump on over and register for Adobe Max. If you want your day to be just that little bit brighter, this is what you need to watch. <laughs> That's right. Um, well, I'm so happy Ian is in the chat. Uh, okay, shall we kick off? Let's do it. All right, so Command N, let's open up a new composition. Um, on Tuesday, we were making these for Instagram stories. I reckon today we'll make them for a post. So the cool. uh, dimensions I want to go with are 1080 by 1350, which is, you know, when you can kind of have portrait videos in Instagram, this is mm -hmm. the dimensions for that. And we'll go with eight seconds and we'll make our background black instead of white. Right. Cool. Why is That's it eight, eight seconds? I think last time you had it, the, the, the increments were important um, or the oh, frames yeah. were important. So is the eight seconds intentional is that kind of arbitrary or is that like the maximum amount of length for instagram where does the eight seconds great come question from? <laughs> um i think the maximum amount of length for instagram is a minute so you've got ages i oh. did eight seconds because i think the way that i planned it initially was the little circle moves to four different points across the composition so i kind of timed it two seconds per point i don't know i yeah it, blah, blah. That makes it's a sense. bit arbitrary it's a bit like what worked at the time um, I, it's a great question, Flynn. You've already, already made me tick <laughs> so early. Um, okay. All right. We'll start now. Um, what, I, what we're going to do today is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be using our guides. Typically I don't use my guides too much in After Effects, but for this job, we definitely will be. So this little button here, the furthest on the right, you can choose your grid and guide options. I'm going to Tick on grid. This is where it gets a bit matrixy, and we like it that way. Oh, here we go. It's already starting. I'm in. Um, <laughs> space bar. <laughs> resolution. <laughs> Done. Uh, no, the best part about that is when they choose the, the password, and they're like, oh, what could the password be? What's their birthday? Damn, it's not that. What's their dog's name? Done. I'm in. It's always it's swordfish. Just, it's always swordfish. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, enough, enough, right. Tina. Keep it together. Um, we're going to create a circle. Uh, the reason for that is because our circle is going to be, and this is something Flynn and I discussed just a moment before, like what is the difference between kinetic typography and just text that animates? And we both had a bit of a few ideas, and I think we both agreed that kinetic typography is one element reacting to another. So because one element moves the other letters or the other pieces, they move with it. So with our original uh, animation, the letters are all reacting to the circle. So we're going to start by creating that circle and placing it in the center. So I'm going to grab my line tool, center it to my composition. And that's all I'm just going to do for now. Then I'm going to create my letter. And we don't want to be two to 60 pixels. We make it for something a bit smaller, like 60 pixels. Do M for magnetic you there hello i'll make it white i thought you're talking to me yeah i'm here i'm here <laughs> um we might make this something maybe we'll go for a different typeface today flynn what's your favorite typeface uh i'm a sucker for avenir if that's yes right. avenir is like my go-to i'll just start with this and i'll change it later and then i yeah don't, don't change it and i'm like uh oh just more I avenue. Mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, why break it? It's You're just, in. It's just a clean, nice font. Exactly. Um, okay, so we've got we've got our letter, we've got M, we've got our circle. I might make that circle instead of magenta. Let's make it white. Um, and now we're going to start coding. Oh, I'm nervous. Here we go. <sighs> okay. Coding. Here we're going. So with the M up the top, let's open up our transform. And we're going to focus on rotate or rotation. And then with the shape, the circle, let's click P for position. And these are what we need to have open. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to create an expression under the letter layer. 
So to do that, you click option on the keyboard and press the clock next to rotation. So I'm holding down option and I'm clicking and it opens up this dialogue. It comes with a bit of code already. So just delete that. And then we're in, we're going to write X and then distance. Um, that's how you spell distance. Yes, it is. <laughs> and then the equal sign. So what we're writing here is that, um, wherever the, hmm, how am I going to describe it? So we're just basically <laughs> talking about the X axis and right. what we want our letter to react to when an element moves on that X axis. Okay. I, makes sense. I, I think makes sense. Yeah. Um, so we've got our equal sign. Now to tell it what we want it to equal to, we're going to grab this, uh, what, what, what would you call this symbol? I wonder if anybody knows. I love how everybody has a different word for this one. Um, yeah. After doing many Adobe lives, I believe it's called a pick whip. Pick whip. That's a great name. I've heard it called um, a hurricane, uh, snail. <gasps> um, yeah. Oh, I like the snail. It's Correct me, chat, if I'm wrong about that. I don't know who's actually got the word. <laughs> I need like an Adobe terminology of everything on my wall. Yes. I just need to like learn it before I go to bed or something. Um, but <laughs> it's a so. thing that you repeat while you're brushing your teeth. Yeah. You have to go through them all. Exactly. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the hurricane or the snail or the, the pickwick and we're going to drag it to the X position of the circle. So we've got our position dialog open. We've got two values. The one that's on the left is for our X axis. The one that's on the right is for the Y axis. So grab that little guy and drag it until the X position is highlighted. And then you can see a bit of formula has popped up there. Then we're going to go minus and grab that hurricane again. And this time go to the X axis of the letter. So up the top. So now it's connected the X axis of both the circle and the letter together. We're going to go to our next line and we'll write Y because now we're going to do the Y distance equals and it's the same drill only this time we're going with the Y position of the circle and then go minus and the Y position of the letter. Done so and we've only got a little bit more to do. I might actually extend this up so you can see it what the whole thing looks like okay now don't ask me what any of this means <laughs> but we're going to go radians and it's already giving us a couple of options don't go with any of these options just go radians r-a-d-i-i-a-n-s equals and then we're going to write math because we're doing some code click on that option then go dot a-t-a-n and then choose a second option for two and it's given us brackets. Inside those brackets, we're going to write, oh my goodness gracious, I hope I have this right. Y <laughs> distance <laughs> by X distance. So we're, I don't know, again, I don't know what we're saying, but I think what we're trying to say is we want to connect these two somehow. Um, and then the next line, we want to write radiance again, but this time we're going to choose the third option and we're going to say we want the degrees to be radians minus 30. And okay. where did you get this from at first? Because obviously if you, you're reading it, but you don't fully understand what's happening, like mm. there's like an online resource where there's been something similar. Yeah. And you've kind of taken that part and, and applied exactly. it in here. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing about, that's the whole thing about code. Like it's, it's a lot about coding. It's like, it's got to GitHub and go, oh, that looks like it works really well. Let's put that over here. Exactly. Um, it's a good thing and about developers the Developers do that all the time. Yeah. I've worked with a lot. Oh my God, no, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? <gasps> Hang on. It's okay. We're all okay. Let me just check what I've done for my finger here. Um, but it's a great point, Flynn, because I notice even with web developers, sometimes they'll find, um, why does, sometimes they'll find a bit of code that they think works really well on another website. And rather than, them starting from scratch, they'll just copy and paste it onto the website they're working on. Yeah. Um, has that worked now? No, it hasn't. It's okay. We're going to do this one more time together and I'll speed through it. Okay. 
All right, everybody, we're in this together. So we're going x distance equals this path minus this position. How are we going in chat? Is everybody following along okay? <laughs> I'm actually curious to know like who in chat uses code in any of in any of their work. Like do you use After Effects mm. and have you played around with code? Um, or is are you looking at this and just like terrified? Is it something that you would never try? Super curious. What about you, Flynn? What do you think? Would you try it? I think I would if I needed to. Like, I think, I think, like, with, like, online, like, YouTube and, like, Behance Live and all sorts of stuff, you can find the answer to anything if you really want to do it. Um, yeah. And starting by copying and then trying to make it your own, I think, is just such a, it's actually, like, such an easy thing to do. And there's so many explainer videos out there. Like, if you really wanted to, like, Google kinetic typography, find that tutorial mm. and go, find, find one that you like. There's so much out there. And go, great. And you can kind of watch it and take notes and follow along and, do it in your own time. Um, I haven't had the need to do it, mm. um, but yeah, I'd give it a go. I used to do a bit of coding, but that was a very long time ago. <laughs> but you said it very well. Like if you can take it at your own pace and do it um, the way that you're comfortable with, it makes it less intimidating. Exactly, yeah. Um, all right, friends, that has worked now. And nice. so um, let's just take a look at this M. If I move my M over here, we can see it changing angles. So it's and rotating, right? Circle, so it's rotating. It, so it's got yeah. a behavior with the circle. Yes, well put. Well put, Flynn. Um, but I want to actually, so with this radiance, this uh, degrees that I've given it, negative 30, I'm kind of telling it if, um, what you know, what angle I want this letter to sit. So I think negative 30 may not be working for us too well right now. So I'll change it to negative 20. Yeah, that's a bit better. But our next job now is to build out the rest of it. So I've written out magnetic um, in my original design. I want to do that same thing here. So I'm going to move this M to sit on the left hand side. And then I'm going to duplicate this letter a whole bunch of times. Maybe you'll move that one there. How many letters are in magnetic? A let me count. One, two, three, six, eight. Okay. So I need to. <laughs> eight. <laughs> I, typed, I typed it out. That would be Max, my Achilles right? heel. Yeah. We we're talking about before, like when you're doing the coding, that, that would be like the worst thing for me for, yeah. for coding would be, I just constantly have to be like Googling, Googling my words yeah. to make sure I spelled them correctly. Are oh you ever God, typing, you ever typing a word and you, you try it like three or four times and you're like, it's not working. You replace it to an easier word. Like, like what? Oh, bad example, but like, oh, this is fantastic. And then say you can't spell fantastic. So you end up just going, <laughs> this is good. Yeah. That's like me with the word definitely. I'm like, what is Oh, I can't e? spell definitely. <laughs> I can't do it. Why is definitely so hard? I don't think anyone can spell it right. Or exercise. It's just like these mm. words. Um, okay, so I've got a whole bunch of M's. And all I did just then was I distributed them evenly. So I did um, distribute horizontally in my lines panel and then I just center aligned them vertically as well. Um, that's interesting because my eyes telling me that they're all wrong but of course that's because they're they're like reacting to it like yeah they're, they're in the they're in they're actually in the right spot but I was I was like oh they're all kind of a bit crazy but I think it's an optical illusion of the, the tilt yeah. of the M's. And I suppose because you're right it is all optical even if it mathematically it's correct you probably might want to go in and change it up so that it looks to be even um now i'm gonna magnet oh god great at typers aren't i um i'm gonna manually change these letters the reason why i'm doing that is if i had actually written out these letters one at a time i would have to apply that code to every single letter layer right but if i just create one layer Add that code there, duplicate that a bunch of times. All I have to do is actually change the layer. Yeah, that's that cool. So it's yeah, so it's much it's much more efficient to um, just change the letter and copy exactly. the code over every time rather than pasting the code in. You'd have to kind of dig in, connect everything up all again. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. Smart. Well, all about the easy option. Why not? Okay. Um, 
So just I'll just jump in with chat. Um, yeah. Yeah. So a couple of people have done a little bit of a bit of cold coding, and it's cool to see, but not so much if I had to do it. Yeah, a little bit like that. Um, mm. Back in school, we did a bit of coding. Uh, Gareth had to learn Python. Wow, for one of my uni <laughs> modules. Okay, you had to learn Python for one module. Oh my gosh, that's effort. <laughs> cool. Great to hear. Um, there's this girl that I follow on YouTube. She's an actuarian accountant. I don't insurance person. I don't know. Anyway, she had to learn R and Python and a whole bunch of other things. And I thought, man, like you go into accounting wanting it to be super simple, yeah. and then they hit you with some Python, and you're like, should have been a tradie. This that's like those. That's like those job. You know, job offers. It's like junior entry entry graphic designer. It's like. Yeah. 10, year, 10 years of experience in HTML, Python, like C++, yeah, um, yeah. you know, user experience and user interface. Um, yeah. Yeah. They want 10, exper 10 years experience in Figma, even though it just came out last year. Yeah, exactly. People. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got our magnetic, that's looking good. But now uh, we want to duplicate it a bunch of times. So we give it this nice little grid of letters. And believe it or not, it's just highlighting all of those letters going Command D for duplicate and then just shuffling them down a little bit and then Command D again and shuffling those letters down and we just do this until we've got enough letters. I might zoom down a little bit. Okay. Um, Flynn, when I was on TikTok last night, I was watching this video of making fun of not making fun but just like having a play with what linkedin is like these days mm. where somebody does a post of, you know looking for to hire somebody and they're like we're looking for our unicorn somebody who's a go-getter <laughs> but understands things i don't know but like just like the most like weirdest list yeah. of expectations that they've got and then they'll follow it up by another post where they're like you know, I was looking to hire somebody and then this person just walked into the into the office and they had no experience, so they became my best employee ever. It's like within the same breath. It's oh, LinkedIn. Oh, oh gosh. Anyways, anyway. Um we'll do one more. So we've got like a nice even amount. And now to test whether or not our code has worked and if we're in. All right. I'm going to turn off my grid and I'm going to move the shape layer, which is the circle, to the very top of the layers panel. Oh, God, I'm sweating. Oh, that didn't <laughs> even work. Let's just go back to the top again. There we go. All right, let's do a bit of a prayer. Let's make sure this right. is actually going to work for us. The Hang creative on. cloud oh, gods. Yes. Please. <laughs> Please. All right. It works! Hey! Okay, hang on. Yes. It's sort of working. Is it working? If I move it there, does it do something? I think it's yes, working it for the the um, the focus <gasps> dot below it. Yes, the anchor point. Well anchor done, point. Flynn. There we go. Focus now dot. that's doing things. <laughs> See, I, just make, <laughs> I just make stuff up. <laughs> the focus <laughs> dot of the snail. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's doing its thing. Oh, well done, Circle. I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. Okay. But we're not done yet, but that feels bloody satisfying. Good job, Tina. Um, good job, team. Oh, good job, team. <laughs> uh, all right. What we want to do is we want to give this uh, animation some anchor points in terms of the path. So what we'll do is we'll go to the one second frame and we'll position it there. And then we'll go maybe to the three second point. So it's got about maybe the two and a half. So it's got about a second and a half to reach the bottom. Uh, and then we'll let it sit there for about a second. It can chill for a little bit, maybe half a second. And then a second and a half later, we'll move it to this point and it can chill there for a little bit. So I'm uh, just adding a second anchor point to the spot I want it to stay at. And then we'll go to the six and a half mark. And I'm just going to move, move it around in different spots. You can sit there. And then I want it maybe the eight second mark to move back to where it originally sat up the top. Let's see how that works. 
Zoop. Bloop. It's slow. Maybe we can speed it up. I think a it's bit. rendering. Oh, bloody rendering. All right. Bloop. Bloop. Ooh. Very cool. Yeah. I think it could be faster. Maybe I'll just move these across. Um, Flynn. Yes. How are we going in terms of time? In terms of time, we're about 12.30. So got about 25 minutes left. Okay, sweet. We're going good. Yeah. All right. Um, now, the last thing we're going to do, on Tuesday, we kind of spoke about the motion design principles of anticipation and follow through to give it this sense of realism as you're uh, animating. So I've just moved this to six and a half mark just to see what that looks like. Um, there we go. That's much faster. That's feeling like it's once it stops rendering. It's feeling like it's ricocheting a little bit. Um, Reminds me of Pong. So like, yes. Oh. oh, you know when you had um, like DVDs or VCRs and the DVD symbol would move to the different oh, yeah. uh, corners. And it never hits the corner. Except for that one episode of The Office. That one episode of The Office, yeah. yeah. Everyone loses it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was great. Um, okay. So now that we're sort of happy Ooh. now that we're sort of happy with the different positions we've got, we're gonna apply our favorite thing, little easy ease. And we're just gonna adjust the values a little bit. I love being in this section of After Effects. This is where I feel like, oh, this is like a back end. I feel a little <laughs> bit fancy. <laughs> um, we're just gonna play with the influence. So we've got two anchor points that are fairly far apart in terms of time. So I can amp up the influence a little bit to 70. And for the ones that are a little bit closer to each other, oh, I reckon I can probably make them 70 as well. So we'll just be here for a little bit. Um, Johanna asks, do you have a rule of thumb when it comes to timing or set timings that you always start with? Um, e not a rule of thumb. It depends on the pace of the rhythm of what needs to be animated and also what feels realistic again. So for example, if this circle needed to reach this point, it wouldn't be realistic if it was going too slow because a circle, if you think about a ball, it actually moves quite fast. Mm. Um, so I think rule of thumb is whatever is the most realistic and whatever matches the mood of what you're trying to create. Mm. Um, and we we're talking about this in Tuesday yeah. as well, like for, for those that may not have caught that one, um, like you were, you were talking about the animation as if it was a real thing. Um, mm. and, and in this one, I noticed again, you just did it. You mentioned, you know, the circle, you mentioned it was a ball. And so thinking yeah. about it in that sense um, helps you animate it to make it seem realistic to what it might visually feel like or look like to an audience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And. I think there are so many options you can choose from in After Effects to kind of help distill the decision-making process, to have an already an idea in your mind about what the realistic um, visual would be. It kind of helps narrow it down the different options that you can take. Mm. Um, all right, the last thing we're going to do. So all I've done there is I've done the easy ease. I've played with the influence. I'm liking the speed that this ball is moving across. Um, it's all feeling quite nice. But the last thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of an echo. So in our original animation, if I slow this down, you can kind of see that the ball duplicates a couple of times as if there's a bit of like a shadow or echo for want of better words. Mm. Um, and this is that follow through design or motion principle that we were talking about before. Um, but we want to create that. And rather than duplicating the circle a bunch of times and giving it different positions and different speeds to recreate this effect, we actually just want to type in echo um, and apply that effect to our circle. And the values that I found work best for this is if I go with the echo time, it gives you one by default. I want to go with 0 0.050, which is not too fast, but not too slow. And the number of echoes. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> oh, you did a really good, a good rhyme on one of our previous ones. Um, something like boom, bam. I love this jam. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, Tina and I will be dropping our album um, early next yeah. week. 
You're probably wondering why you're here today. It's yeah. because of our launch. <laughs> Beautiful segue. Yeah, let's do it. This yeah. is a, this is the album cover. Um, yeah. Tina and Flynn rap about design, After Effects, and yeah. fan fiction. Ian was going to be our um, a warm up act for what was going to come up for us later. Uh, okay, so the number of echoes we wanted to be two, and that will make that means that we will have two circles appear. Cool. If we had one echo it would just be one circle following it up and i think those are the only different changes i did yeah so now we can watch this and see oh should we let it render first oh no it's doing its thing there we go oh that's nice and satisfying that's great Shoom. Zim. and of course because the, oh, I just the want to circle goes that. back to the original spot this is going to loop mm. really nicely on social media and yeah internet on internets, on socials, everything. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm so relieved that worked out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was great. You killed it. It was awesome. Um, oh, good. good. And um, let me see. There was a couple of questions as well. Um, here's a good general question from um, Johanna again. Um, mm -hmm. So far, we've seen you animate color and type. What's something you haven't animated that you would love to try? Oh, great question. Um, I would like to spend a little bit more time animating people. I've done a little bit of that, um, like animating characters, but using walk cycles. Like walk cycles, things. yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to do that more. I'd also like to animate with music, like actually having a rhythm to match. I think mm. that'd be really interesting and challenging. That would be cool. Uh, yeah. It's Drop funny. Your favorite songs. <laughs> We're talking about DIA in the last one. I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it again. One of the one of the impressive things they've done, they they did is they had you know um, I can't remember what band it was, but they had um, their um, kinetic typography like react to, reacts to the music. Um, mm. So like it, they had programmed all these words and things that were happening all like in After Effects and everything, and then displayed it. But depending on what the band was playing, the music, the bass, the treble, all that sort of stuff, the vocals, it would react in a different way. And they're talking about yes. how, like, they 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 built it, but then said, "What's really really cool about it is that it's not like if you had to do motion graphics for a festival, you'd have to do eight hours of rendering and motion graphics and stuff. But because it reacts in real time, really, you just got to get the coding right, and then and, mm. it, and the file's actually not that big, and to make yes. changes is quite easy. Like you could change the words and all this sort of stuff um, because it's reacting in in mm. real time, and that kind of gets to the point where my head starts exploding. And I'm like, okay, how does that work? <laughs> That's almost like um, when you think that something's going to be really complicated, but you end up having a really simple solution. You're almost, I don't know about you, but I get just like a little bit upset that it's that simple. Yeah. And yet I'm not, I'm still unable to do it, but that's really cool. That was for, was it for like a, um, a house musician? I think so. Yeah. Or, or a DJ or something like that. Yeah. And they have it in the background as they were performing on the yeah. screen. Like yeah, that was Tiesto crazy. or something like that. I don't yeah. know. I don't know who the cool DJs are now. I'm showing my age with that one. <laughs> it was like Tiesto or something. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, great question. Great question, mm. um, Johanna. Um, and then I was wondering if you maybe you could show us just how you would export this because we were talking about yeah. exporting this, um, you know, in a different way, like for a different thing. So just um, how would you prepare this to? Um. Typically, there are two ways you can go about it. You could either go um, file export add to render queue, and that would render it as an MOV file. MOV files are typically a bit bigger. Um, I like to stick with the MP4 because it's faster, smaller file size. So I typically go add to media encoder queue. And I don't know if you can see it on my screen because I'm not sharing it. But um, after that little dialogue opens up, there are a few options you can change, but most of the time I just click on export, go, and it's done. Yeah. Um, so two-step process, opening up Adobe Media Encoder, changing any settings if you need them to, um, and then clicking go. Yeah. I always did everything natively from After Effects until one day I realized that you can send stuff to Media Encoder and then go back into the file and just do whatever you wanted in yeah. After Effects. You can change it. And I didn't realize how useful that was until I started having to like put out multiple versions of, you know, different things mm. from After Effects and it turned like something that would take me an hour because you'd have to make the changes or open the file and then sit there and watch it render and then put that file wherever you need to put it. 
and then do it again and then do it again. But if you're just sending yeah. stuff, it's like sending it to a little assistant. It's like, you yes, sort this out. It's great. Um, also, if you wanted to make this into a GIF, uh, you could export it into Adobe Media Encoder and it's got a GIF option, an animated GIF uh, format that you can choose from. So I used to do all of that in Photoshop, exporting videos, opening them up as a video in Photoshop and then exporting as a GIF. Mm. Um, so Media Encoder is just the best assistant out there. <laughs> Very cool. Um, we've got a little bit of time left. So if anybody has any more questions, please let us know about, about this one or about anything else. Um, but there was one of the, on Tuesday, we ran out a bit of time. Mm. So did you want to kind of be able to show us that one? Mm. The, was it magnetic oh, yeah. that we didn't do or vibrate that we didn't do? It was vibrate, I think. Yeah. It was vibrate. Uh, so it's this one. This one feels like it's got that festival vibe to it. Like Definitely. It's the, that's the, the base. Vibe's going on. That's the base. That's the dropping. base. Yeah. That's it. That's Tiesto before he gets on stage. <laughs> um, how long do we have? Because this one, um, we can maybe get through it a little bit quickly. It depends. Okay. Um, 15, a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Okay. We've got time. Um, all right. So this one, we will make it like an Instagram story. So Command N again. And all we're changing in our values here is we're going 1920 for the height. Uh, and I think I'll just make this 10 seconds just in case because I can't remember how the, the duration of this one is and I'll make the background white all right done um, now similar to Tuesday's session we're just going to write using the text box we'll write vibrate in the center I'm going to change the typeface it's got a white color on it I'm going to make it 270 or 260 over 270 pixels. And instead of Avenir, even though we love Avenir so much, <laughs> I'm going to go back to good old right. Okay, there we go. How dare you? No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm cancelled. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, we've got that. Now we're going to go right back into our effects panel. I have my favorite panel in the world. And we're gonna type in repetile. Repetile, repetile. And the reason why we're doing that is if we go back to the original animation, you can kind of see at around about this this point, vibrate moves from being just one word to kind of like repeating, going up, right. down, left, bottom, right. We wanna create that effect. Um so if we open up our effects, we're gonna go to one second 12 so one and a half seconds and oh actually sorry there we go okay so one second eight frames we're just going to put an anchor point for expand right left down and up meaning i don't want anything to change about this text up until this point and then one frame later at one second 12 we're going to now expand it. So we're going to expand it right by 200. And it's moved. We'll expand it left by 200 as well. And then we'll expand down by 900. Boom. Expand up by 900. Bam. Uh, and then we're going to move a whole two seconds later to three seconds and eight frames. And we're just gonna place those anchor points there again, meaning um, I want my text to remain expanded for these two seconds. But then two frames later, at three seconds, 12, I wanted to return back to just being one text. So I'll make all of these zero again, done. So if we watch how that looks, sits as it is, opens up, stays open and then whoop, it comes down um, when it when something collapses it's good to collapse it really fast because typically in real life you'll open something a bit slowly and then you'll close it really quickly mm. um, so it's nice to have that effect when you're animating as well but now that we've got it opening and closing the next thing I did was I added this little bit of a maybe I'll zoom in so we can see I added this ripple if you can see like that vibration that the letter's feeling. So the effect for that one is just 
good old ripple. This one is usually used for um, if you want it to look as if there's water rippling through your text. But if you change the values ever so slightly, it could just look like little vibrations. Um, okay, so we want to change the radius. If I open up this, we've got a radius. You want to change it to 100, meaning I want my entire artboard to look as if it's radiating. And then we want to change the conversion from asymmetric to symmetric. So you can kind of see that difference again if I zoom in. And this is all just preference. Like for me, that felt a little bit too hectic. So when I made it symmetric, it felt a little bit more realistic. Nice. We can write that down for our um, rap, um, symmetric and hectic. So that can be part of our <laughs> rhyming dictionary for our... <laughs> Works really well. Uh, this is your one job, Flynn, and you're doing it so well, <laughs> <laughs> the rhyming. Uh, it's kind of like that, um, who was the rapper who rhymed Connecticut with, with something? Who cares? Anyway, uh, I don't there, was, <laughs> there was a rapper who, you know how like um, Eminem rapped orange with, with another word oh, yeah. and you were like, yeah, yeah, it's that moment. Uh, that's you, Flynn. You're equal to Eminem. Great. That's uh, <laughs> life goal. Done. Uh, all right. And then we want to make, so we've got all these options here. We've got the wave speed. So, you know, how hectic you want that wave to look. We just want it to be uh, two, because that's not too crazy. And then you've got your wave width. So, you know, what's that ripple effect as it's mm. moving out? And then your wave height, which is that cool, like sense of, oh, this is now like beats or the bass, or there's some sort of um, musical feeling to it. Uh, we're going to go and tell me if I need to speed up, Flynn, because I know. Uh, we're doing okay. We're running. We're, we're doing, doing okay. okay. Yep. A little okay. about ten, about ten minutes. Oh, okay. We've got plenty yep. of time. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, at twenty frames, so right before the one second mark and before our text repertiles, we want to start this vibration feeling happening. Um. So we're going to put in some keyframes. We're going to go. Ooh, what did I say? So for the wave width, we just want it to be two and we'll add that keyframe there. For the height, we'll stick with zero because that's fine. And then our ripple phase. So that's like how many times it does this little thing. We want that to be just one and we'll add our keyframe to those points. Then we want to jump ahead a little bit to the two second mark and we want to amp it up. We want to go wave height at 200 Whoa! And then <laughs> we want to go uh, at 216, so a little bit further out. We want the wave width to be 50. And these are just values that I tested to see what worked. You can change the values depending on what you want your own rhythm to be. And then at the four second mark, so after our vibrate retile has collapsed, so at this point, we want to go our wave width at two. So we're going back to what it was at the beginning. We want to go zero for the height because that's what it was at the start as well. But we want the ripple to be three. So it's gone through three cycles. Mm. Um, and then our final little bit at the end, because I always like it to just like have a little bit of action just at the end. We'll make the wave width 20 to end. Actually, I don't know if that does anything. No, it doesn't. So don't worry about that one. Delete it. Um, Okay, so now all we have to do is just our favorite thing again, is just easy ease. But let's watch it, see what it did. So we go, voo, voo, crazy bass, <laughs> and then it comes in. Okay. That's awesome. It's pretty fun, isn't it? Yeah. And again, After Effects did it all for us. Zoom, <laughs> back in. Um, I'm gonna apply easy ease because I reckon it could be so much more smoother than that. And look at this, doesn't that just feel like the biggest matrix curvature Oh, shenanigans cool. oh gosh that could be artwork on its own so why in this case are there three that are all connected before they were kind of one after another kind of sequential graphs um so are these like three different effects that are happening at the same time great question before i was just playing with one i guess yeah i guess effect um or one transform effect but now because i'm working with three it's showing me the different speeds of these three are moving 
Um, but I can, if I just grab my mouse and highlight that one point, it'll grab all three curves for those three. What would you even call these? These little lines of effects within effects. Do they have a name? I don't know. I'm going to make the influence 50 for these. Um, you know what I love about Figma? Sorry, I know I shouldn't really be talking about Figma on here. No, go for but it. But they've got, they've got a little keyboard shortcut where it tells you what all of these things are called. So you can just keep it open and it tells you, like, the terminology, what it means, what its shortcuts are. Oh, but then you don't it's, get to make up the words. Oh, you don't. They take that creativity away. <laughs> It helps when you're teaching, though, and when a student asks something and you're like, oh, Just hover great question, top. Brad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so glad you asked. Uh, okay. So now we've got, like, this really nice, easy ease happening. It's smoother. It's lovely. But the last little thing I want to add, and this is, again, optional, but I just wanted to add that last little bit. Um, see how these circles start to appear? Mm. So I've sort of timed it that when these circles appear like wave lengths wave forms whatever they're called um that is a reason why the vibration is beginning so it's almost like music starts and the things begin to vibrate um one thing reacts to the other so we're going to duplicate our vibrate text layer vibrate two we'll move it down in our panel and then we'll open it up I and mean, i want to keep ripple but i want to remove the reptile effect so we still keep ripple but now we've got another effect we want to add which is called radio waves so it's under the generate um options we've got radio waves which kind of looks cool on itself already yeah that's cool we'll change it to black instead of blue and then i just want to make what do i want to do where is it up here okay so the render quality we're going to keep at four we're going to make it polygon waves and parameters uh, at each frame does that do anything let's check i think it does oh hang on a second what did i do here okay i added the one second mark oh so nerve-wracking okay It sort of does its thing, sort of doesn't. I think you need to play around with it a little bit more. Hmm. Um, hang on, let's go here. There we go. And then we probably want to end it at this point. So it's. I think this is one of those layers where you kind of need to play in this panel here and hmm. get it to the right options that you want and to the rhythm that you want it to work with. But it does act that just that extra bit of that extra bit of uh, je ne sais quoi to the... Yeah, to the I was going to say action. Yeah, <laughs> extra little bit of action happening there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's vibrate. That's awesome. And you're done. And you're ready for it to be on a festival somewhere. There you go. That's super cool. Thanks for the thanks for the bonus one. That's really great that we didn't have time to do it on the Tuesday and it's like, yeah, we'll just jump into it today. That's, that's really great. Right. Um, if you still have the other one open, I think magnetic, maybe we should just show that just as we kind of wrap everything up it's very cool um something that you can try out yourself um i remember when i first saw the project file you were talking about this you're like don't worry it'll make sense don't be too off put by the <laughs> you know dozens and dozens layers. of layers and i was yeah. like wow but actually i mean it's really just duplicating the same thing doing it right once and then duplicating it lots and lots of times um mm. and the expression duplicates with it which is really great so it's actually very simple um, to replicate. You can check it out. Maybe you're watching this on demand. I hope you you know you can pause it and check it out and um, grab grab the code, copy the code, and, and throw that in. But um, Bettina, as always, it's been so much fun hanging out with you. Oh, such a fun, safe place <laughs> in our little bubble. Here. Safe space here at Adobe Live, and thank you, Chat, um, for being awesome and hanging out with us. Um, hope you enjoyed your time, um, like obviously Tina and I did. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you can follow Tina. Where's the best place to follow you? Probably Instagram. We've been talking about Instagram for some of these things. Is that where people can follow you to find out more and follow your work? Yes, Tina Victoria underscore and uh, website tinavictoria.com. And if you're on TikTok and you like fantasy fiction books, 
Tina Victoria underscore in there as well. I was going to say, do you want to plug your, your TikTok as well? Yeah, so I'm glad you yeah. did. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. It. Oh, that's great. Again, as I said, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I'm going to leave you all um, with a little bit of Adobe Max promo video before we go. Um, if you haven't registered yet, check it out. There's so much cool stuff, including our very good friend Ian Haig, who is in chat here, has done a fantastic session. There's something for everybody, whether it's animation, illustration, just general creativity and inspiration. There's tons and tons of stuff there, um, and a lot of it made locally here and also obviously internationally. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with us and we'll see you next week on Adobe Live. Thanks, Tina. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.